to Wild Moose. I'm Nicole. And I'm Amy. And we are bringing you a real, raw and raucous podcast. An unfiltered truth behind running a business and running a family. Dive in. Let's get talking. Titty bit, titty bit. How many tidbits have we done now? Uh, this might be five. Five? Do you think? Like, oh my god, oh it's like my five. God. Um, what's been happening in business at the minute? I tell you what I've done that's quite interesting mm. is I interviewed someone on psychological safety the other day. Oh, what does yeah. that mean? So, psychological safety is a behaviour within a business or an organisation where you level up to be vulnerable and to call out behaviour that is not acceptable, enabling a safer environment to learn from, to grow and to scale within. So all high... So like being the anti-bully. Fucking yeah. It's Mm. like what we would do all day long. How can I learn from this? How can I do better? So all high-performing teams, there's been a massive piece of research done. All high-performing teams have got a lot of things in common. And it's not like strive, strive, strive. It is actually showing that vulnerability Mm. and getting to know and understand each other more and calling out behaviour that's not acceptable in order to learn from so that you can admit mistakes. So there's not that I'm the boss, you're the employee, what I say goes. Mm. You have that healthy challenge Mm. as a culture embedded in your organisation or your business fascinating i actually was reading something the other day that said about um the open door policy it might have been a linkedin post Mm. that how dangerous the open door policy actually is because it's a way of manipulation Uh, interesting yeah Yeah. and it it was fascinating because it was like if a boss says my door is always open Mm. it's basically saying come in grass up your colleagues tell me what you go what's going on and then i'll probably fire you yeah because you're not performing, or you coming in and whining and whittling on, yeah, and I'll see your true colours. But this is the opposite. That is amazing, but the oh, complete opposite of psychological safety. So how exactly? Is... But everyone thinks that as it's a bo- it's, a, it's quite an old school thing, isn't yeah. it? It's quite an old school. You can imagine that, like white collar. Anyway, um, <clears throat> that person sitting in the office that's got a job that they probably don't deserve. <laughs> they're, they're probably like clawed their way up. Mm. Um, like trodden on yeah. trodden on whatever it is that kind of wolf of wall street you know like my door is always open bullshit yeah and actually as a boss you should never actually need to say it we shouldn't have a door really you shouldn't have a door but you should never have to say my door is always open it shouldn't ever be like that yeah because if your culture's right you wouldn't need to say it yes anyway sorry don't apologize no 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 because it's we're having a chat we're having a chat <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, this is hilarious. This has come up in nearly every episode since we've done this. Is this going to be like the running theme? Yeah, we're having 100%. a chat, we're having a chat. I only play big and we're having a chat, we're having a chat. I changed my reminder this morning. <gasps> That's big. I know because I started it, you finished it. Complete finisher. <laughs> um, what time's yours? 9.30. Oh, mine's 9am. Yeah, but I'm always either dropping the kids off or still getting ready. Mm. If I've done a workout, I will still be getting ready at nine. I'm so. a princess. Um, I know I am a bit of a princess. I love, I love having a workout and meditation. Oh, shut up. I can't. No, no. There's no space for it in my life. Has not it? yet. Not yet. But then I've got a peloton. It makes it easy, doesn't it? It's so fucking bougie, isn't it? <laughs> I've got, I've far, got far. a peloton. I've got nothing else, but I've got a peloton. <laughs> Best thing I ever bought. And actually, my payment's finished this year. That's really exciting, isn't it? It is exciting. I actually own it. I was <laughs> talking year. to Matt Phillips, so I will sit at my desk all day and it's not... Really un... It's really bad for you. Yes. Do you not take a break or anything? To we, yeah. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. So it got to the end of the day and my ankles were a bit swollen. And I said, that's the first time that's happened. I said, uh, other than when I was pregnant, I said to Matt, I, I think I need to get a treadmill. You know, one of those walkie treadmills for under my desk. Yeah. And he was like... Huh. no, you need to walk outside. And I was like, there's no time. There's no time. I can't. There's no time. There's too much to do. No time. Um, it's not good for our brains, though, to have that amount of pressure, is it? No. Are we? 
So, back to psychological safety. Yes, I should walk. Yes, that might be better for my life. Yes, yes, yes. We should all be doing things better. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we're not designed as humans to work at our desk that amount of time. Oh, I know, yeah. Or for that long period. It's meant to be like an hour burst, isn't it? Anyway. Yeah. So what did Matt say about your treadmill? Categoric. Just go out and walk. Because it's not just the benefits. Of, well, one, it's free, but two... Being in nature puts things into perspective, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, he's right, but am I going to implement it? Probably not. No. Um, it does so. make a huge difference, though. Even meditation. So I'll only do, like, a 20-minute class. If I'm rushed, like, this morning, I didn't want to get out of bed. Piper woke me up in the middle of the night. Like, I didn't, yeah. I'm past those, Yeah, yeah. like, being woken up now. Yeah. So when it does happen, I feel really shit. <laughs> um... But, yeah, she woke me up, and then I was like, you know when you just snuggled up? And I was like, I'm so cosy. My alarm went off at half six. I was like, I'm so cosy. I'm so warm. I don't want to get up. And then Martin came in for a spoon. I was like, no, I definitely don't want to get up. I'm so comfy. Oh, that's nice. Um, And then Piper came in, and I was like, oh, family in a bed. It's like my favourite thing in the world. It's my favourite thing. All four of us in the bed together. Oh, God, I love it so much. Same. Apart from when you get kicked in the head. No, I don't like sleeping together. Oh, no, no, no. Just But, like, I love when we're all having a cuddle, or we're all having a bit of, like, a cup of tea in bed, or we're watching something. We read, and so every night when we do um nighttime story we all read together on our bed oh i love it mm. so magical isn't mm. it because that's the shit they remember yeah so i couldn't get my ass into gear this morning so i only done a 20 minute session mm-hmm. but if i'm doing a 20 minute i'll go hard and do like hitting hills Ooh. it's really good hannah frankson oh my god she's my favorite uh so and the music was banging so it really got me going quickly and yeah. then i'll finish with a 10 minute meditation I can't meditate for sure. Neither can I. I don't, but I come up with some great ideas. Do you? Yeah, yeah. That's why I've got a flip chart in here. Because oh. if I'm meditating, then afterwards I'll just make a note. I don't know. I do a guided one. How do you meditate? What on my you... yoga mat in front of the chair. Oh, so you put the yoga mat down? Yeah, because you're meant to be on the floor, really. You shouldn't be sat in a chair. You should be... Are you laying down? No, I cross leg. I would sit up. Right? Oh, right. But the I have a rolled up mat underneath me, so it puts your hips up a bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a bit hot and sweaty anyway, so I just put my jumper on and then, like, cool down. But Yeah, because you start to get cold quite quickly, yeah. I imagine. Um, I'd love to do that in time, I think. Get a belly, man. That'd be amazing. Or just, I think if I was walking, imagine walking and working. I couldn't do time. that. No? No, I couldn't do it. Huh. And also, I can only work out first thing in the morning. And because I, I get so sweaty... <laughs> I have to do it when it's hair washing day. Martin thinks it's hilarious because yeah. I'm like, well, I have to work out on these days because then it's hair washing days and I can't do it in between because otherwise I'd have to wash my hair. And he was like, what? Yeah, I'm a sweaty motherfucker <coughs> when it comes to exercise as well. But I was like, I can't do a workout in the middle of the day. Yeah. Because then I have to wash my hair and then it's like another half an hour, 40 minutes out of my day. I'm going to shower, wash my hair. So I have to time it. It's every, if I'm going to do it, it be three times a week, hair washing day. <laughs> so, yes. It, but it does really make a difference. She, I don't know. We, we have not recorded this video, but Amy's giving this little like, you nearly need, really need to try harder face. No, it's not try harder. I just know how difficult it is when the kids are the age that yours are at. Mm. When you want to, you're ready to do something, but you haven't got the time to do it. Mm-mm. And I know how difficult it is. It wasn't you've got to do it. I just feel like even if you had 10 minutes to try and meditate or something in the middle of the day that would be beneficial for you yes but what i also could do is start walking to and from nursery but it's a fucking long walk. it is a bit of a trek isn't it yeah and then i thought when we was coming here today shall i walk mm. but again a bit of a trek yeah it is um yeah what else is interesting stuff has been going on in your life hmm I feel like we're on the edge of big thunking thoughts. Uh, I'm meeting Tim tomorrow. <sighs> yeah, he's meeting me in the Farnham salon. <laughs> yes. I was. Um, I didn't know whether I was expecting him to cancel or something, actually. But no, he's well up for it. And I uh, messaged him earlier and he goes, Great minds think alike. I was just messaging you. And Spooky. Yeah. Um, and he said, I'm looking forward to seeing... Um, Seeing one of your salons and then seeing how far we can take movies. Yeah. 
It's exciting, isn't it? That's really exciting. Still haven't done my business plan, though. I've got well, to get my ass into gear, really. I think that's because yeah, I something am chatting else to you instead. absolutely fucking massive is about to go in there. Yeah, it, it, yes. Yes, it is. Um, I've had another franchise conversation. <laughs> so I've got four now. Just looking for premises. Uh, I've got a million and one jobs to do from um, my management meeting and then management training and they're all little jobs that mm. I just need to get done I've got to redo uniform like loads of stuff and I can't quite outsource it yet because I don't have an ops manager yeah but yet. I've had loads of different strategic moves within my my teams mm-hmm. so I've got my Joski back who has worked with me for eight years managing one of my salons then went and managed a franchise salon um and now I've got her helping me out with one of mine in Horsham for a couple of days um I'm going to Horsham next week to spend some time with her and the management team. Like, there's just lots of strategic stuff. Mm. Like, it feels like a game of chess at the minute. Lovely. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm. And you know when you've just got a mammoth to-do list and then you're like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what could I procrastinate with? <laughs> So I fanned around with logos yesterday. Yes, you did. <laughs> and then what else did I procrastinate with? Oh, I did have a job. I've had a to-do list, thing on my to-do list for ages, which is to put the positions we're hiring for on our movie's website. Yeah. And I done it. Oh, and nice. it's been on my to-do list for about six months, I think. Well done. But after the salons, they're like, there's a lot of them recruiting. So I was like, okay, well, I'll get it done. I will stick it on there. Good job. And then I need to update Indeed with our inter- uh, jobs. And then um, because of, of that, I then got distracted and started, realised that my Instagram feed wasn't working on the website. So I sorted oh, that. Oh, that's so annoying. It's so when annoying. It yeah. And it's so fucking annoying that you have to go through Facebook Meta to get work. a token. It doesn't no, work anymore. No. So I found a plugin. Nice, well done. The, a free plugin that shows your full Instagram feed. So fuck this whole messing around with tokens and access shit. <laughs> I got shit. so fucked off. I just deleted mine. I like yeah, all of it's it. so like, annoying. Yeah. But this plugin is really good. So oh, okay. I'll fire it over if you want. Thank you. But this I'd... plugin also done Google reviews, and I can't quite figure that out because Google reviews is a trickier one, isn't it? Yes. Getting your Google reviews. For... Oh god. Trust Pilot, easy. Nah, not Google, because then you've got to create another oh, access code codes. within another developer's site. Yeah. Oh. So I go down this rabbit hole, yeah, no yeah, tech rabbit hole. But because we've got six salons and they've all got their own Google business that I have, mm. I own, but they can manage. Um, yeah, I need to get them from all of them and pull them together so that there's like a carousel of all the new reviews yeah. coming through. It will look sexy as fuck when I figure it out, but I could outsource this. But this is me procrastinating in its truest form. I don't know how to be a web developer, so well, guess what? I'm going to spend hours of my day figuring this shit out because it's fun. <laughs> so I did something similar this week too. What? I have updated the copy on Wild Bird Marketing website. Oh, well bloody done. Yeah, it's not been changed since I launched. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I need to sort out mine. But because we're launching the training course, I thought... It, it's not going to. Re- it will not resonate at the Ooh. minute, like with the old copy how it was. And I've probably been sitting on that job for about six months. Oh, give me a high five! Thank you. Yes, well done. Um, I have updated it. I feel proud of it. I probably need to read it again. I remembered in the middle of the night the other night that I didn't do a hyperlink, which I need to go back and do. <laughs> but it's done, and it's mm. better. But it's done. Yeah. Well done, my friend. Thank you. We love it when you just get shit done. Tick shit off the list. The other thing is I removed a whole page and that was so cathartic. What, stuff that actually you don't need to do? Oh, what what the fuck is this doing there? Deactivate that. Off the homepage. Off the toggle bar. See you later. Oh, what, on your website? Yeah. What was it? What what information did you have on it? How it works. Which, in truth... Works completely different with whoever it is, and it had my old packages on there. I used to sell oh. by package, like one to ones. So you could buy a starling, you could buy um, a bright bird, you could oh. buy an eagle package, and they would all have different things. But they were effectively all workshops. The hilarity is the bright bird package is the foundation of the training course. 
Wow. Yeah, so it felt full circle. I bet circle. you put loads of time and effort into thinking of those packages. Oh, well, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. But I did, they were part of the business originally, mm. but now they're not, not as relevant anymore. I think it's really important to have a refresh and to evolve and understand, as long as you're not pivoting all the time. Yeah. But uh, because you're not giving it enough time, if you're constantly... like Because you, if you pivot too much, it's normally because you're in fear mode, isn't yeah. it? Or it's not working, not quick enough, you're panicking, yeah. I've got to change it. Yeah. Um, but if you're pivoting because it genuinely needs it yeah. and it needs that refresh or you need to go, you found your niche or you found your superpower, then I think it's a... This is five years. Five is years. Has it really yeah. been going five years? 20, uh, 2019 set up, yeah. God. Wow. Yeah. When's your five-year anniversary? Oh, uh, it's like, shit, I didn't say it. it was like the 4th of January. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. That's a real shame. Mm. Oh, God. And I've had some shitty jobs to do this week. Well, not shitty, but you know how I always say, like, I want to give people information, as mm. much information as possible. Well, I have decided that a lot of the, in the nail world, there's a lot of possible outcomes. Same with waxing. Mm. Um, but there's a lot of possible outcomes, nail conditions, things like that. And I would rather be open and honest and upfront about these things. Yeah. Because at the minute, the way the industry, I feel the industry works is you've got the nail techs that are so scared Mm -hmm. of being sued that they just avoid. Avoid. It's not our fault. It's not our fault. We'll speak to this manufacturer. It's a problem. You've had an allergic reaction or something. It's not our fault. And then you've got the manufacturers who find every reason possible for it not to be their fault you're using a different light you're it's a it's the wrong lamp nothing to do with the products that we put yes. on them it's all to do yeah. with that you're not matching the systems absolute bullshit mm-hmm. the insurance companies are like you have to follow manufacturers guidelines to so, the t yeah to the t otherwise insurance companies are bailing as well mm-hmm. and it's like this real mess mm-hmm. of nobody taking any accountability or ownership and i think there's an element in the middle where people are just either allergic or they're just sensitive or they've just got a thinner nail that yeah. can't warrant a heavier product. Well, or you're whatever talking it is. about a universal method for every human that's different. Yeah, yeah. So I done one on something called greenies, which is when the nails go green when there's water trapped in. People think it's mold and it's not. So I done a whole blog and video on greenies, but there's another one on onycholysis. I've called it oncolysis my entire career, and I've realised it's actually called onycholysis. So that's really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Um, but onycholysis is when your nails lift from the nail bed. So it looks like you've got the white underneath and it can lead to fungal. A lot of people blame the products, which is true in some respects because it's a bit harsh. It's a chemical. But I'm trying to explain that it's the same as like you wouldn't bleach your hair every three weeks. Yeah. Eyelash extensions are another one. You're using glue on your eyelashes. And if you just have a fine hair, you're normally likely to have a slightly bendy nail because it's keratin, it's the way that you are. You're going to have a slightly finer eyelash, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm that perfect example. My nails are really bendy. Uh, I can't bleach my hair more than twice a year because otherwise it it snaps. Mm -hmm. And I can't wear fake eyelashes because they just make my eyelashes fall out. Mm -hmm. So I struggle with all of it. So I would be that person that would get this onycholysis Mm. because of the trauma on your nail my nails just wouldn't be able to handle it yeah so rather than it being a blame culture yeah which it really isn't yeah it's a yes our product is a chemical we have to respect that it's a chemical yeah just because it looks pretty and it's done well it is still a chemical and it's our job it's also to nurture your natural and make sure that everything's going okay but it's also the awareness of your own body as well yeah, Which but we... people just don't like, they, they just want to, it's, you see it in all the forums, you've got these therapists that are like, oh my God, it's not our fault, it's the, it's all the brands, and they're like brand bashing, and then the brands are like, no, 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 it's nail tech, you're not investing in your own knowledge, you're, it's your fault, and then the clients obviously just think it's the therapist's fault. And the insurance companies are like, I don't care whose fault it is, as long as we're not paying. <laughs> as long as it's someone's fault, other than ours. Yeah, so, um... God, it's such a mess. Yeah, but, you know, like you can't just put stuff in or on your body without not, yeah. some sort of knowledge, understanding of... Like, I know... I did used to get my nails done um, every couple of weeks. But I know that doing that is going to weaken my nail underneath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I do. know that when I come to have that break... It's going to take a little while for them to grow back and to get mm-hmm. their strength back. Yeah. 
So that's my choice, though. Yeah. And it's about risk profile, but it's also about my understanding of how my body reacts to different things. Yeah. But then I think also it's the way that it's sold. There's some people that wouldn't think like that. Yeah, and it's not would your go, fault, is it? Like it's mm. no, but then I just think, well, if clients are coming to us and they think it's like a gentle system, then my marketing's not correct. Yeah, because our sis is all about nurture and your natural. Yeah, but we, it's not a gentle system. Mm. But also, if people want their nail polishes to last three weeks, which they do nowadays, it used to last ten days, and people were happy with that. Yeah. Now they want it to last three weeks. Well, what takes it to last three weeks is chemicals. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like it's serious chemicals to make that last because we all want to pay as little as possible to last as long as possible with yeah. perfect results. Yeah. So with no impact, with no impact to but, what your to your natural. Yeah, but the, you know, and then there's this all, builder gels are so popular and they are incredible but they are the strongest chemical we've ever seen in the nail industry. Mm. And, you know, you've got people that are literally doing a one-day course and then putting builder on people's nails. Oh, my God. Don't I think, feel like we could probably do a whole episode on the beauty industry and aesthetics and... Yeah, so unregulated. Oh, my God. But then the difficulty with it is that it's, it's unregulated, but also it's one of the lowest paid yeah. as well because yeah. people don't want to spend the money that it should we should be charging yeah we've got a horrible toxic culture around it really haven't we yeah because if i put like we charge how much do we charge for nail extensions 45 quid i think for gel nail extension i think they are uh we don't do that many of them because we're not that sort of nail bar really mm. um but if we charge what we should be charging it would be about 75 quid people wouldn't pay it no of course they wouldn't because of the industry standard. Yeah, because you've got all the non-standard salons. Yeah. But those non-standard salons use the cheapest possible products. Yeah. Um, they're all uh, fake products as well. Yeah. And not all of them, I shouldn't say that. There's a lot of them that use fake products. Mm. Um, they're not necessarily paying salaries. Also, Would they have what insurance? Happens if you think about b- beauty businesses or any business where the client is shielded from what those products could be, and bearing in mind the cost of everything has gone oh. up exponentially. If, as a business owner who doesn't have m- morals, mm. you could save a few bucks by using a fake product, mm. that must be massively prevalent in the industry yeah. now. But a lot of the products are not branded, but a lot of clients don't really care. Exactly. Well, okay, yeah. So the ones that do care come to us. Yes. The Which ones the that don't care yeah. want to get a set of acrylic nails that mm. is dental acrylic for thirty pounds, but it is the hardest form. It's that it's so hard that if you bang it, it'll pull your natural nail off. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Which is what this is why M- Mui's is so wonderful, but it, because but it's the backlash of it. I know so because difficult. you're going against the grain. Like, Always, yeah. I feel like I'm constantly treading mud. And so there's some people that, like, so I've done this whole thing on on ecolysis Mm. and um, it will land well with a lot of people because I think education is really important. I think people need to understand that there's the area in the middle which is the truth and it's not a blame culture but it's about awareness and Mm -hmm. understanding and then if it happens to you, let us help you deal with it and Mm. manage it and this is when you need to see a GP and this is when you need to check it's fungal and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't mean that the tools are dirty. Mm. But you've also got GPs who are then going, oh, you're nail tech, you go into one of those horrible nail bars, it's unhygienic. And it's like, no, because you don't know about it. Yeah, you're just diagnosing blame. fungal, but you're not even testing it with clippings. So how do you know? Yeah. And also, if your nails have lifted and you've got an area or gap between your nail and nail bed, guess what? You can pick up anything in that yeah, gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's not always just dirty tools. Like, stop assuming. If everyone stopped assuming and actually educated ourselves yeah. a little bit more, yeah. then this could all work better. Oh, it's like, do you know what it reminds me of? When we used to, when I worked in an office and something would go missing overnight, yeah. everyone would always go, oh, it's the cleaners. The cleaners yeah. have done this again. Cleaners yes. have done that again. Yes. What on earth? So I I'm always feel like I'm in that person going... Why are we all being a bit unkind? Yeah. Can we all just pull together and say, like, this is the truth. Yeah. This is the actual facts. Yeah. People are grown up enough. They have to be 18 to have their nails done yeah. with us. They're grown up enough yeah. to make these decisions. If I give them all the information, then they can make the decision based on their facts. Yeah. And then if all of our team know how to deal with it, then that would make it easier, surely. 
Uh, but the backlash of that, mm. it, the the problem is by being so open, you're then really vulnerable yeah. to bashing from yeah. the ones that aren't necessarily loyal clients anymore, don't come to us anymore, and they come at us with a problem they had a while ago. That's yeah. really difficult. Yeah. Because you have to be ready for it. And people are vicious on email. I could, yeah. What well, keyboard Well, they can be, yeah. Yeah. The other thing, though, is like because your marketing is so on point and because you articulate perfectly what it is to be a moo, what it is to be a client and why that's so important, the majority of your clients are just going to respect you for what you're doing anyway. Yeah. And as long as we're speaking to that avatar, as long as we're speaking to that avatar correctly, yeah. we're going to attract the right people and it will 100%. it will remove the others. But I don't, I hate that feeling, you know, when people are unhappy and mm. you're like, I want to fix this for you, but I just don't know if I can. Yeah. Yeah, it's really difficult. So that's been going on. It feels quite heavy at the minute. Just keep and I've got a st- yes, yeah, that's true. Actually, my own advice. Yeah. And I've got to do a video on it. And you know, it takes you a while sometimes. So sometimes I can do a video for social and just knock it out, and it's amazing. Yeah, and it's quick. And I don't care if I've got makeup on. I don't care if I. I don't have to be like perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I'm quite happy just doing it at my desk. This is what I do. This is like it, the information is more important yeah. than the person presenting it I think yeah um but I done one yesterday and I waffled on for like 10 minutes (laughs) and I was like oh god I can't even put that out have you let that one client get into your head yeah yeah a lot she gotta go yeah I know I've had a few of them though in the last six months not only like probably three that have been really difficult one bit of advice yeah go back to your avatar Step in her shoes and tell her what she Yeah, wants to yeah, do. she wants this information, yeah. she wants this advice and then she'll come back 100%. because of it. Yeah. Don't talk to the naysayers. No. Talk to her. Yeah. Good advice. Thanks, love. My pleasure. What a great tip. I didn't oh. even think we'd be talking about that on Titty Bits. Good old Titty Bits. Thanks Titty for Titty listening. Bits. Thanks, love. Bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to give us a cheeky follow, wild underscore moose. And if you've got anything that you want to hear from us or if you've got any questions, please just ping us a DM. We'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe. Bye.